Kingdom Hearts 3. I've played since the first one came out. I remember I was at my friend's house. My friend's brother was playing it and it intrigued me. And so I wanted to try it out and they let me try it out. And I just fell in love with it. It was amazing. Got my own PS2, got Kingdom Hearts. Played Kingdom Hearts 2 as well, which is really good. It's one of the best sequels of a game that I've ever played. It was great. Kingdom Hearts 3 was in development for a very long time. Very, very long time. Like they kept pushing back the due date because it was still in development. And I think actually they scrapped the game and had to remake it because they wanted it in the Unreal Engine, which dear goodness, that is <laughs> beautiful. Kingdom Hearts 3, what I like about it, the combat. The combat was great. I heard that there wasn't gonna be drive modes and there's not but they're second forms, which kind of take the place of drive forms in a weird way. It's basically just more triangle moves, but they happen really often and it's really great because great, because once you get a hit chain high enough, then you get it and you're like, I'm so epic. And it's great, I love it. When I first heard that drive modes were not gonna be in KH, I was upset because drive modes made KH2 like the best ever. Cause you get two Keyblades and then you're like this beast and it's amazing and I loved it. Flow motion was back, which I've never really tried before because I've never really played the 3DS version, but it was it was good. I did like it. You could wall run finally. <laughs> took took them like two decades to realize, oh, remember that scene in Cage 2 where Roxas is running up or Sora? I think it was one of the two. They were <laughs> running up the skyscraper. Yeah, now you can do that basically whenever in Cage 3, so it's like took you two decades, but good job. <laughs> I like the Keyblades, I like the world, I like the characters. I liked it overall, it was a great experience overall. I love how everything connected in the third one. I'm trying so hard to not say spoilers here. I just loved how they took all the games and like meshed them together in an amazing way. And it was so great and I loved it. I cried. <laughs> One good thing about this, I actually did get really sad like two times. I cried. I posted it on like see, Twitter and Instagram showing my <laughs> love and affection for this game. Oh, like... There were a few instances where you could play other characters and those were always the best for sure because in Kingdom Hearts you're always playing Sora and nobody else but this game it kind of kind of let you play some other characters so that was that was kind of nice. Also, you can have a party of more than four and you don't have to switch out people like in KH. Although I'm a little salty that I still didn't get a party of nine and nine people weren't like fighting somebody because there were so many opportunities. Okay, I'm gonna, now it's time to go into what I didn't like about Kingdom Hearts 3 and what I think made it suffer. First of all, you can't have a party of more than five people for some reason. It's a PS4. Why can't I have a party of nine? There were so many instances where the story was like, oh no, these people are being swept away, or oh no, these people are falling and they're no longer here, or oh no, these people are getting teleported to other places and now they're not here, or how, wow, how convenient. It was dumb, because it was just like, yeah, we all fight together, and then everybody is like, splits up, and I'm like, dude, we could beat this boss in like two seconds if everybody were to help. But no, that's not how it works, which is dumb because I was hoping for the final battle, like everybody would fight. No, just the three main people. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Do you realize how epic of a battle it would be if everybody from everywhere fought together? That would be amazing. But no, that didn't happen. So that made me a little salty. Also. The dialogue in Cage 3 is utter garbage. The pacing is terrible. It's like they took KH2 and then upped the graphics. That's it. Even in Cage 2, I don't think it was that bad. The dialogue was actually really good. Hi phone. The dialogue was actually really good. So I don't know what happened in Cage 3, but the pacing is like, Sora! Yeah, Goofy? It's so dumb. I hate it. The cutscenes way too long. They were saying things that didn't need to be said. I felt like I was playing a kid's game, which is bad because I've never felt like that with KH. Kingdom Hearts has always been a game that I feel anybody could play and enjoy it. But with KH3, I felt like a child because they kept saying things in the gameplay and in the clips that I'm just like, I have eyes, I have ears. You don't have to tell me. Shut up. I wonder if we can find some ingredients around here. That, 
I wanted to strangle Goofy and Donald. I swear, that was so dumb. Zoro, we gotta find the lucky emblem. Shut up, nobody cares. Well, at least we got a good meme out of it. Yeah, we got a meme out of utter garbage dialogue. <laughs> You, like you you're directly looking at it and then it plays that it's like are you kidding me? I see it the amount of time that they put in this game It's like you can't even get that right like what's happening here? I got used to it, but the initial one in the Olympus. I was like uh, This is gonna be the entire game isn't it? Yeah, okay I was just gonna play it for what it is cuz like that's one reason why I didn't want to make a video on Kingdom Hearts a main video because one, everybody's gonna talk about Kingdom Hearts 3 from the perspective of, I played it in 2002. I'm a real fanboy. I, now nobody else has this perspective except me, which is dumb because that's literally everybody's perspective. So I was like, there's no point in making me making a video about it if everybody's gonna say the exact same thing. That's not how I roll. I'm gonna go into complete spoiler zone here. So, fair warning. So basically, everybody from like days, birth by sleep, the main Kingdom Hearts games, Axel, they all team up at the end, which was beautiful and I loved it. And that made me so happy to see everybody hugging and crying. I'm like, yes, finally. I didn't know Xion was gonna be in this game. That was a shocker, but that was really cool because I was like, oh, oh, and when Rox, oh, oh, when Rox has appeared, I screamed. I literally screamed at my TV because I'm like, are you kidding me? What? So like everybody's together and it makes me so happy, right? And then you beat the final boss and it's like, yeah, we beat him. A little bit before that, Kyrie dies. That hit me and I'm like, no, it was sad. And then at the end, everybody's there and then they remind you, hey, hey, uh, hey, Kyrie is in here. Hey, which I completely forgot about because I was too busy feeding, defeating Xehanort. But yeah, then Sora's like, Ugh, I gotta go. I gotta save Kyrie by myself and only by myself because I don't know, because KH4. <laughs> we have all these people here. We have all these people here. Why does Sora think, hey, we finally have everybody here. Over two decades worth of lore, all in one spot. I'm just gonna go by myself. I'll see you later, goodbye. And then Riku's like, Oh, it's okay, Mickey. He's following his heart. Cause that's the whole point of Kingdom Hearts is to follow your heart. Light and darkness and balance. Yeah, you get it. And Mickey's like, Oh, well, gee, Riku, uh, I, I guess that's true, but okay. It's just like, he's so accepting. He's like, fine. The last cutscene just totally confuses me. Cause like everybody's on the, on Destiny Island. Yes, they go back to Destiny Island. It was great. I loved it. It looks so good on the PS4. Oh my goodness, Unreal Engine. Oh, everybody's having a good time. Literally everybody's on Destiny Island. Everybody that I mentioned before, from Birth by Sleep, from Days, from the main games, everybody's there. This is confusing, because like everybody looks over at the ocean, but you don't see anything. And then all of a sudden it cuts to the palm tree where Kyrie and Sora sit from earlier in the game, when they were there at first. Wait, Sora found Kyrie. Yay, they're happy together. And then they're like holding hands and I'm like, ah, yes, finally a happy ending. And then you realize that Sora's not there. It's just Kyrie sitting on the tree and Sora just fades. So, I'm very confused by this ending, because it's like, wait, Sora was looking for Kyrie, but Kyrie is on the island, but if Kyrie was actually on the island, they would let Sora know about it because Sora has a phone now. So wait, is Kyrie not there either? I think, what? But Sora's looking for Kyrie, but she's on Destiny Island. Do you understand? There's, this doesn't make sense. I know they're setting it up for Cage 4 I realized that before the Destiny Island part. <laughs> it's annoying. Because it's like, you're saying one thing, and then you're saying another thing, but it's like, obvious plot hole here. Unless Kyrie isn't there either, then why didn't she fade with Sora? Do you understand what I'm saying here? This doesn't make sense. Oh my goodness. We all have phones now, so Sora should be here as well. But he's not, but Kyrie is. But they were looking for Kyrie. Kyrie died, but... <sighs> Obviously this is gonna be explaining KH4 in like 10 years, I get that. That ending killed me. 
so bad. We realized that the two people on the chessboard were Ericus and Xanort. They were them at the end too. And it's like, whoa, that's the people of the chessboard. Whoa, cool. And then it's revealed that Zigbar was actually a Keyblade wielder and that he has a black box with the chessboarded. I'm not sure. It's not really revealed because I didn't watch the, the remix movie thing with the with the horse mask people. I didn't watch that. I probably should, otherwise that would make sense. I don't know how to feel about that ending, truly. It left more questions than answers. <laughs> Cause I was like, at first I'm like, wait, why is everybody happy? And then I see Kyra and Sora and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And then Sora fades away and it's like, wait, that doesn't make sense. You know, there would be at least a few people sulking, but no, everybody was happy as if it was a happy ending, which technically it was. And I guess they trust Sora enough to not die, because he's been through a lot at this point. Maybe that, I don't know, I'm done here, you get the point. Cage through is good, it had its obvious flaws. Everything has a flaw, including Kingdom Hearts. I understand nostalgia is a thing, but there's obvious flaws with this game that should have just been fixed. I could make the dialogue way better just by simple editing. That's how bad it is. If we don't get going, we'll never reach Elsa's palace. Hmm. Oh, right. I almost forgot. If we don't get going, we'll never reach Elsa's palace. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Hey you, yes you, this isn't my main channel. Go subscribe to my main channel where I make better content that's better edited. I just wanted to get this out here and get my thoughts out on the internet just like everybody else. Okay, bye.